mysterious dark energy was dominating space. And its repulsive energy is driving the galaxies apart. Science always assumed that although the universe continues to grow in size, it would eventually slow in its expansion or perhaps even collapse on itself. Gravity would overcome any momentum it had. But while measuring the expansion history of the universe, scientists were shocked to realize that the universe wasn't slowing down, it was speeding up. And a grim fate awaited any living thing. The universe will disintegrate and temperatures will become so cold that any intelligent life will freeze to death. From the moment the Big Bang created the universe, space has been expanding and never stopping, carrying galaxies along for the ride. The space in between the galaxies is expanding, but galaxies are not expanding. The Earth is not expanding, the solar system is not expanding. Edwin Hubble first discovered galaxies were moving away from the Milky Way in 1929 by realizing the more distant galaxies move faster away from us than the nearby ones. He realized he could measure their velocities by studying their wavelengths through a prism. It's called measuring the redshift and is still used to measure distances in space. And he found that in fact the greater the distance of a galaxy right now, the greater the speed with which it's moving away from us. That is, the greater its redshift. A few years ago, astronomers decided to use redshift measurements to measure the expansion history of the universe. But how do you measure the entire expansion history of the universe? How do you travel back 12 billion years in time? We have the capability of going back in time directly to observe the past. So much in the same way as a geologist, you know, looks at layers in the Grand Canyon and as he goes down into lower and lower layers, looking back in, in history. If you look at progressively more distant galaxies, you're looking at them as they were at progressively greater times in the past. To measure expansion history, scientists used Type 1a supernovas as their standard candle. One example of a standard candle might be a 100-watt light bulb. You could have a bunch of these things sitting around in your room at different distances from you. Then the more distant ones will appear fainter and the more nearby ones will appear brighter. Type 1a supernovas are always consistently brilliant no matter where they occur in space. A supernova is the colossal explosion of a star at the end of its life. It just goes kabam! And it occurs when a dying star known as a white dwarf goes through a nuclear runaway and just literally blows itself to smithereens. We find the Type 1a supernovae in very distant galaxies, so they look really faint. And they, then we compare them with type 1a supernovae in nearby galaxies whose distance were, distances were measured using Cepheid variables or some other technique. Using these type 1a supernovas, two different teams set out in the 1990s to measure the deceleration rate of the universe. But to capture supernovas as they occur, astronomers had to put the universe on surveillance. You can compare this a little bit to perhaps surveying a casino. So all these cameras are on all the time, and most of the time they don't find much of anything interesting. But occasionally they find what they're looking for. You have to look at lots of galaxies. So what we did is we took large telescopes with cameras that have wide fields of view, about as wide as, say, the width of the full moon. And we took many snapshots of space using this wide field camera. And each, each snapshot contains tens of thousands of galaxies. And by comparing the apparent brightness of the distant Type 1As with those of the nearby 
type 1a's in nearby galaxies, we can get the distance of the distant galaxies and hence the amount of time that we're looking back in the history of the universe. After the two teams studied the results of 60 Type 1a supernovas, scientists were shocked at their results. The universe wasn't slowing down, its expansion was speeding up. We all expected that expansion to be slowing down with time, because after all, all of the galaxies are pulling on one another. We were so confident we were going to measure the rate at which the universe was slowing down. And then we found, of course, a negative answer. The universe is not slowing down. It's speeding up. And this was just a big mystery. That is really, really weird. You know, we expected to measure some amount of slowdown, and instead it's expanding more quickly. That's like the wrong sign, right? We were really afraid that we had gotten completely the wrong answer. We rechecked our measurements, we checked the analysis. A bunch of people on each of the two teams did the measurements and the analysis independently and kept getting, getting the same result. One of the greatest shocks in the world of cosmology just in the last few years has been the realization that our universe is accelerating. This repulsive force driving the universe was called dark energy, an invisible energy that was nothing anyone expected or understood. It suggests that over the largest distances in the universe, there's a repulsive effect that dominates over gravity. And dark energy was creating space, taking galaxies along for the ride. This energy that appears to fill the universe and stretch the expansion of the universe faster and faster with time is now known as, as dark energy. So here I throw the apple and initially it's decelerating and then dark energy makes it accelerate away from me. So you throw the apple and it just zooms away faster and faster with time. Like the apple forever traveling into space, galaxies are being carried away as more space is created. So if you could imagine, you know, a classroom populated by chairs, and those chairs are slowly getting further apart from one another within a classroom. Because if all the chairs are being stretched apart, uh, like in the expanding universe, no matter which chair you sit on, you'll find all chairs are moving away from you. So the chairs are not really expanding. In fact, the chairs are the same size, really. What's happening is that the room is getting bigger. The, the space in between the chairs is being stretched apart. More space is being created in between the galaxies. So you have individual galaxies remaining of constant size in a universe where all of space is getting bigger and bigger. Dark energy is very different from dark matter. It doesn't clump up like galaxies do in clusters or like stars do in galaxies. Instead, it appears to be pretty uniform, and we find the same amount of acceleration no matter which direction we look at. It's probably smooth, although some people believe there may be uh, structure in its distribution and its influence. Dark energy is the energy of the vacuum, the energy of nothing. Even nothingness has energy, and it's pushing the galaxies apart, creating a runaway universe. It appears dark energy and dark matter have been at war with one another since the beginning of time. Science believes dark